Hello everybody, this is Adam with Columbia Sales and I'm here today to talk to you about our short tip tip boards and hopefully explain to you how to raise more money for your charitable organization or, or your local fundraiser. Uh, today I'm, I'm holding in my hand specifically a 36 short tip and we will go through uh, basic operation principle pieces that you're going to need to know and understand so you can operate it properly. First off, you'll notice that this particular board reads 36 sure tip. The name of the board tells you how many tickets are on the board. So for instance, if, if you were to sell each one of these tickets for a dollar a piece, you know you're going to bring in $36 because this is a 36 sure tip. Almost all of our short tips work that way, such as a 16 short tip. We'll read 16 short tip up here. You know there's 16 tickets. Uh, 24 short tip. You know there's 24 tickets. If you sell it for a dollar a piece, you're going to bring in $24. So again, this one happens to be a 36 short tip. If I sell it for a dollar a piece, I'm going to bring in $36. Our short tip tip boards and tip boards in general are best described as a handheld raffle. All the pieces you need to conduct a raffle are held in your hand. You have all the, the playing pieces. Uh, based on the number of playing pieces, you know what the odds are, and you're able to determine the winner based on the winning number that's hidden underneath of this scratch off label. Now I'm going to go into point out some key features of the tip boards things that you'll need to know, understand, on, uh, so you can operate it efficiently. Uh, first off, if we start at the top of the board, there is a serial number printed or stamped at the top of the board here. It needs to match the large five red digits on each ticket. Uh, so it's always good as the operator just glance at this number, let's say make sure this matches, that way there's never any confusion as to who has the winning ticket. Uh, or if the ticket matches the board you just ran, the raffle you just operated, so on and so forth. Uh, now, on the back of the board, there are corresponding numbers and lines to each ticket that will be on the front of the board. So, when I sell one of my tickets to a player and I open it, let's uh, see, this particular ticket happens to be the number 36. I can go to the back of the board, find a number 36, which happens to be right here, have that player go ahead and initial or, or sign their name here. That way once I've sold all the tickets and, and I'm looking for the winner, right, we, we've scratched off the, the winning number, then I can go straight to, hey, who signed line number 36, it's John Smith. Um, I can track him down uh, anywhere in the building or, or in the function and, and say, hey, John, let me see your ticket. Let's make sure the serial number matches. Uh, once we've verified he has a winning ticket, he can jump up and down the screen. Yeah, I won. I won, right? So moving on. In recent years, we have changed our winning number concealment function here. Uh, now it is, is scratch off ink. It's not quite as soft as what you might find in the, the lottery tickets that the states are producing. So it's, it's best scratched off with a non serrated blade such as a pocket knife. And it's also best done on a, a hard surface like a tabletop, uh, something like that. But you can see I can hold it in my hand and, and I've got a little pocket knife here and, and I can scratch it off relatively easily and reveal the number. It can be done with your fingernails. Um, you know, if you have good strong fingernails, it can be done that way. It also can be done with a uh, unserrated coin such as a penny or a nickel. But I've found that the easiest way to do it is, is with a, a little pocket knife. Uh, seems to work best. So in this case, we happen to have the number six. Uh, so whoever has the ticket with the number six on it happens to be the winner to our raffle at this point in time. Now, big question is, how do we raise money for our charitable organization or our fundraising event? One of the most basic examples 
of using a tip board to raise money for your charitable organization is let's say you're having a steak fry for your local high school football team uh, let's say the football moms are trying to raise money to buy new jerseys or um, cleats or, or just have a party for the end of the year whatever it may be but anyhow they're trying to raise money for their local football team so they have contacted their local sporting goods store whoever does your screen printing in town and they've asked uh, for donations from them such as t-shirts or hoodies um, long sleeve t-shirts whatever it might be so let's say now they have they have a a hoodie that they want to raffle off that happens to have the uh, logo of their local high school football team on it and, and now you're at the steak fry and, and let's say the sweatshirt might be valued at $35 okay so you're gonna run it on a, a, a 36 short tip you're gonna charge a dollar a piece for the ticket right the, the sweatshirt was donated so you have you have zero cost in that at that point in time uh, as you sell each ticket at a dollar a piece, you know you're going to bring in $36 for the hoodie. And then uh, once all the tickets are sold, you reveal the winning number. And whoever's ticket matches the winning number now receives a hoodie with your local high school football team logo on it. And the football moms now get to put an additional $36 uh, into their uh, fundraising event. If you have any questions on how to use or operate tip boards, you can look us up at columbiasalesinc.com. All of our contact information is there. And stay tuned, there'll be many more videos on some of our, our lesser known tip boards. And of course, we'll go through the function of a regular tip board and, and so on and so forth. But for now, remember, take a tip from us. Have a good day.